My name is Lindo Gushe Malimela, and you're watching Teen Gospel Live. That's right, and my name is Omegunen. Now, Lindo, today's code comes from Nelson Mandela, and it says, Nobody is born hating someone mm -hmm. because of the color of their skin, his or her background, or his or her religion. People learn to hate. And if people can learn to hate, then they can certainly be taught to love, because love comes more naturally for the human than its opposite. So today we are talking about friendship development and the topic for today is xenophobia. And our guests for today is Joanne and Mudinda and Tabiwa. Welcome once again to Teen Gospel Life. It's about that time, guys. It's time for us to meet our guests for today and to hear more about our topic. Hi, guys. How are you? Hey, good. So can you please tell us a little bit about yourself, your names, what you guys do for a living? All ladies right. first. Ladies, ladies first. first. There you go. <laughs> I'm Joanne from Philippines, and I'm a secretary now in just a month. Oh, wow. That's nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> my name is Tapio Muswashi, and I work with um, SID Media. I'm a producer there, yeah. Okay, my name is Mudin Dambewana. Um, I like to call myself a missionary in the mining sector. Okay. So, did you, which high school did you guys attend? In the Philippines, yes. It's an Adventist school. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I went to Presley Primary School. That's an Adventist school also. And my high school I did at uh, Agassia World School. Um, yeah, so that's that's my. I, I've heard of that school. Yeah, the school? I've, I've heard of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not sure if I've seen it. Uh, the uniform, yellow shirts, blue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> school uniform, especially. Nah, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> well, um, I feel a little weird because I, I, I went to a public school in the United States of America called Baron Springs Public Schools. And that was between grade one up to grade 11 and then my family moved uh, from there to Zimbabwe and I attended my last year at Anderson High School which was an Adventist high school. Uh, yeah. Okay so most of you guys attended Adventist schools. Did you guys have people from different cultures and genders because I know you went to the Philippines so was it like different cultures in all your schools? Yes actually the truth is everywhere we are in this planet earth we will eventually encounter cultures and differences yeah. that's mm. not yeah. from our own mm. yeah yeah that's similar to me i primary school people from all cultures uh, black white um, same thing in high school different walks of life so i've just constantly been exposed to different cultures um, throughout my schooling career Mm. Yeah. The same here. I mean, I, I grew up in Barron Springs. That's close to Andrews University, which is an Adventist yeah. school. So my parents were studying there. And because of that, a lot of the parents that come from around the world, yeah. their kids go to the public schools. So like everyone else here, we had people like from black, white, Asian, you know, everyone, everyone was there. Yeah. Did you guys ever get treated differently at school because you were of a certain nationality, certain country? Well, did you guys, were you ever treated differently? Like, how was it? Um, interestingly, in primary school, it was not so much of an issue. Like, mm -hmm. um, I guess when you're young, we just sort of, we just friends. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, we used to sit over people just, yeah. at our white friends' places and so forth. It was just, but high school, things became different. Then you see the <laughs> division. Now it's okay. um, whites, blacks. Indians, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But probably because there was an Afrikaans class and an English class, maybe that could have also caused that. But um, not in primary school, just in high school, there yeah. was a bit they of difference. They also had that at my yeah. school, the Afrikaans class yeah, and the, the English, English class. class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately for me, I can't remember 
Mm. <laughs> really? Oh. You can't remember that far? <laughs> I was enjoying my elementary and my mm. high school life. It was, yeah, I was enjoying it. I have good friends. We have good teachers. I think it's also because of the Adventist environment. Yeah. Yeah, so you were happy. I'm, I think you were happy. Yeah, you don't have any problems. <laughs> no, you were happy. You probably saw me nodding because I, I think I had a similar experience yeah. Yeah. with you, which is interesting because cause I'm Zimbabwean. I was born in Zimbabwe, but when I was in the States, I, like, in, like in Andrews and in Berrien Springs, like you really don't, because everybody's from different cultures, so I guess our differences make us similar. Mm -hmm. okay. if, I don't know if that makes yeah. sense, if I'm sounding smart or, or like, you know, but uh, okay. so, so our differences kind of brought us all together. But it's funny because when I moved and I, and I went to uh, my final year in school, I guess because one, my accent was different, mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's also because I'm coming in at the end of everything, everyone has already made yeah, friends. Everyone, then I kind of felt peace. a little, yeah, I kind of felt a little in the in the back, yeah. But um, yeah, like growing up, it was like as kids, you just, you're kids. Just kids. Yeah. <laughs> what is the difference between culture and gender? Between uh, culture and gender. Who's taking that? <laughs> okay, um, maybe I'll start. Uh, I think gender has to do with male and female to start off with, but it goes beyond that. It's more, it also has to do with the socialization that is attached to that. So mm -hmm. what people's understanding of what it means to be female and men, and that's what creates that, that separation or that difference mm -hmm. between the various genders. Culture, the way I've understood culture is a way of living that certain groups of people live mm -hmm. as a way of adapting to uh, whatever social issues or environmental issues, yeah, whatever, that will then determine the culture of that specific place or that specific people. So mm -hmm. that's that's how I I would try to explain. Yeah, and I will just add from his definition. Yeah, in fact, we are all members of a cultural group and our cultural identities develop based on the relationship of the different members. Mm. And so culture is, is very complex. Yeah. It's, it's dynamic. It's never stopping. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And um, what, um, why do you think people are not respecting other people's cultures and gender? Well, you know what? I think it comes from a place of fear. Um, you're afraid of what you don't know. And because they don't know necessarily the cultures of everybody, they, they fear it. So, um, which is why a lot of the fear based things are, are physical things, because those are the first things that you can kind of see, like, especially like with the more normal, um, race type thing with black, whites or whatever. You can you can automatically see oh no she's not black and and I'm black oh I, I'm I don't know what she's like and then that fear kind of breeds that okay I'm not gonna hang out with you I'm not gonna mm. speak to you so I think it comes from a place of fear not knowing. I didn't know it was also complex right so there's different cultures as everybody knows can you please like tell us what are the different cultures and like just break them down for us. Yeah, I can <laughs> say one or two maybe. <laughs> That's so yeah, fine. like Western culture, this this culture is defined as you know the European influence or U European countries, mm -hmm. as well as um, countries that are strongly influenced by European immigration, such as America. But today, we can see this Western culture in all oh. parts mm. of the world in different countries. Yeah, mm. yeah. everywhere. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming. We're not done with you guys yet, okay. but we are going to take a break right now. So I'm going to ask one of you guys, you guys can choose among yourselves to link us to the break using that camera. Uh, Everybody's yeah. looking at me. <laughs> Wait, I got you. Do oh, you do the next one. Okay. <laughs> Stay right there. We'll see you after the break.
Welcome back, Babugeli Emakai. We're still here with our guests, finding out a little bit more about xenophobia. You can you can keep in contact with us through our social platforms. So right now, because I picked up that there's there's like different there's like different <laughs> accents, meaning that obviously there's 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 culture behind it, obviously. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you guys to teach me um, a short phrase saying "My God" in in each like language of your choice okay. um, and we'll start with with you i think um chivenda yeah let's let's say so when you say my god you say mudzimuanga okay so right? it's mudzimuanga that's right and okay i'm from philippines but i will be saying it in french yeah. it says mon dieu mon dieu yes yeah yeah <laughs> um and i am zimbabwean yeah so to say, my God, you say Mwariwangu. Mwariwangu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. So um, let's get back into the questions. Mm. How did Jesus interact with people of different cultures and gender? Okay. That's a, yeah. That's a good, okay, maybe let me start. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the greatest things that makes the interaction of Jesus so unique and so exemplary mm -hmm. is how he was so non-judgmental in his yeah. approach. He didn't really care. It's, I would maybe sum it up by saying love in all its attributes, uh, tolerance, care, and all mm -hmm. of that. He, that's just how um, he interacted with people as one who really cares about who they are as a person and yeah. their background from, I think, a place of love. Mm -hmm. I think that's how I would sum up uh, God's interaction with a uh, man. Yeah. And just to remember a text in the Bible in Romans, it says, for there is no partiality or favoritism mm, uh, with God. Yeah. Yeah. And that tells a lot. Yeah. 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 No, definitely. I, I, I always like the way God approached people because he just didn't come rebuking people like in a lot of the things that he did uh, we talked about gender um with he did interact with women um in different ways you see in the story of the story of the woman of blood um back then the law said you know she can't touch you and stuff um but then he he knew that there was a much deeper thing with her that she needed salvation so before anything he was he was showing love like you yeah. said he was showing love to people um despite who they were despite their culture uh the woman at the well was of different cultures but he was there speaking to her so it's stuff that would have been completely unheard of back then people were not interacting with the different cultures but christ kind of flips that on its head and shows us listen yeah. <laughs> interact with each other you know and what exactly can we learn from jesus um we can learn so much yeah yes maybe. <laughs> yes so much maybe let me love Yes, love and, and so forth. But I, I was thinking of a, of a text in the book of Leviticus, mm -hmm. uh, chapter 19, verse 34, um, seeing that you're talking about xenophobia. Mm -hmm. It says, But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among mm -hmm. you, and thou shalt love him as thyself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. So I think that really reflects the mind of God. Mm -hmm. Whether there is a stranger, the first principle we pick up there is you treat that person as if he was your brother, he was born amongst you. Mm. And then you treat him as yourself. And why? Because you were a stranger also. Mm -hmm. And we are all strangers. Yeah. If you yeah. leave your space and your country or go on social media, you are a stranger to someone else who reads your, your feed and so forth. Mm. So that should humble us and, and consider that, you know what, this is a big world that is now becoming one right. whole, uh, you know, uh, salad. And, you know, in that case, we, we need to understand that, you know what, look, I will love you the way that I am. Mm. It doesn't matter if I have differences or mm. um, I think or speak in a different accent and so forth. So I think that's what we learn from Jesus as recording the Old Testament. He comes and demonstrates it to us as he relates to people when it's here on, on planet Earth. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, those are some of the lessons. Definitely, and I, yeah. I feel, um, sorry, I feel, I feel like um, going back to the story of the, the Samaritan woman, yeah. the woman at the well, um, Christ never mentioned 
her being a Samaritan. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and, and, and I believe God made us all different and there's beauty in, in those differences. And one thing that he did that throughout his life on earth, through Christ's life on earth was accept the differences and not disrespect the differences. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing that I have, I have learned is to understand that, yeah, there, there are differences. There is different races, there is different cultures, there is different genders and all that. And that's the beauty of creation. That's the beauty of God creating. Yeah. And with that, there is that respect that you need to have for it. But again, we're sitting here discussing xenophobia, yeah. which means we are not learning from from jesus why why are we not learning <laughs> that's that, that's an amazing question um <laughs> you know um i i talk a lot in examples um one example that i have is if you're driving you you're in control of the steering wheel so sometimes you're able to go the speed limit or it, it's illegal, so don't do it, but go a bit above and you trust yourself, you know? Um, but if somebody else is driving, there are times where I'm trying to put the, the imaginary brakes on. Yes. So I feel when, when we see what Christ did, it's, it's us saying, okay, let's forget how I feel. Let's forget about my fear, because even though I don't know this person, I'm, I'm just going to let Christ drive and let what he did lead me. And, and we, we just want to be in control, just like, like with the steering wheel. We don't want to let what Christ did allow, but let me say that again. We don't want to let what Christ did be what we do because we're in control of what we do. So I think there's that fear of letting someone else. So guys at home, you heard it from our guests. Let God take control. And Tina, Sizomlande Lange move. is our political character crush of the week and we're going to play an interesting round of our resident game 30, 30 seconds. seconds and we continue our conversation with our guests right about now though it's time for us to have our biblical our and biblical crush for the week who our biblical crush of the week is so wami our biblical crush for this week is paul and silas when they were in 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 philippi um, a, a Roman colony in Macedonia. So what happened was, after preaching like for, for several days, they got arrested. Oh, so, so when they got arrested, um, they, before the magistrate, okay, they stood before the magistrate and they, they faced like verbal xenophobic attacks, like um, mm. these guys are Jews and they're disturbing our cities and they're advocating uh, customs that we as Romans cannot accept or even practice. But obviously that was, that was like pure lies, you know? And exactly. Um, but, but Paul and Silas were unbeknownst to their accusers, the Romans themselves. But again, if you want to know more about our Bible crush of the week, you can go read Ro uh, Acts 16 verses 20 to 21. It's about that time again. It's time for us to play our resident game in 30 seconds. Are you guys ready? Yes. Are you sure? I'm fired up. And your time starts in three, two, one, go. He has leprosy. Um, skip. <laughs> His friends denied him. Jesus. Uh, oh, um, Joseph. Um... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> the mother, uh, the, the, the husband of Mary. Joseph. Yes. Uh, he's a king. Um, um, Time. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Take off. There's oh, no are you I'm ready? ready? Right, We're going to go anyway. Okay. Three, yeah. two, one, go. Okay. Woo! Woo! Oh, okay. Okay, fall from heaven. And the people ate it. <laughs> there you go. Okay. The kid gave it to Jesus, and then he gave everybody to eat. 
The king gave it to Jesus and Jesus gave everybody to eat. Two fish, five loaves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 okay, 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 okay. Moses saw this and it was like warm and stuff, but it wasn't warm. <laughs> Moses, and he took off his shoes and then he was like, <laughs> There you go! Yeah. yeah, we're gonna give it to you guys. Can you guys show me your yeah. Oh my you got god. It. <laughs> yeah. 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 So Lindo's team got one rice. <laughs> unfortunately, and they got three out of six, which is good. So congratulations to you guys. Right now, we're gonna have them celebrate their victory during the break. Don't worry, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back from the ad break and we're still chilling with our guests, finding out a little bit more about xenophobia. That's right guys, and today so far we've told you guys who our biblical character crush of the game is, played 30 seconds and right now it's about that time again. It's time for us to get back into our conversation with our guests. Right. So, another question <laughs> is, um, does it affect does, does disrespecting other genders or cultures affect me and those around me? Uh, it does. And I'm glad that you said, does it affect me? Because it mm -hmm. does affect you um, a lot. When you disrespect other people, you're not giving them a chance to show you what their culture is about and you end up kind of in this closed bubble. Yeah. Um, so it does affect you in, in a growth aspect um, and then it obviously affects those around by hurting them with words or physically hurting them and things yeah. like that yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe just uh, i wanted to speak about the growth aspect that yeah. we we don't realize how much we actually um rob ourselves mm. uh, by pulling away from other cultures there's mm. so much that is that you can learn from mm. other cultures so many experiences that you can draw from and I think the greatest thing is when you do go and make the effort and make the first step to reach the other culture, you actually realize, but this person is human. We are so similar. Mm. So, so um, then we understand that um, beyond all of these differences in culture, as I think it's a point you raised, we are all one culture at the end of the mm. day, yeah. right? Um, there's no more Jew or Gentile or female or male. We're all one in Christ. So... I think you would rob yourself more than the, the injury and the hurt yes. because of the rejection and the hatred and mm. that the next person feels. Yeah. But you also, like, um, it's like, let me put it this way. You have an option to actually see the answers to the questions that are going to be in your test. Maybe we can say test of life. And you decide not to look at them. And then mm. you go and you fail. Right, so it's, it's that thing. There's so much you can learn from other human beings. Yeah. So right now we're going to take another video call from a viewer at home. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just have to hear what they have to say. Hi everyone. My name is Litabo from Pretoria. And I have a question. If someone from a different culture or gender starts to disrespect me, how can we set boundaries and limits? Let me just cite it verse in the bible do unto others what you want others do unto you yeah. mm -hmm. so how would you feel if you are if you are not respected mm -hmm. so yeah uh, yeah I, I think the as christians the biggest boundary that we can set is to return that hate mm -hmm. With love. love. Yeah. You're going to say yes. it's that it's with hate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest thing. It's, it's a longer route, it's a longer process, but when you can continue smiling, mm -hmm. even though someone hates you, um, there's something that you do to that person's life that will, will be so transformational. Yeah. So I think um, with prayer also because you need support mm -hmm. it becomes hard i'm saying this but it's so difficult yeah. mm -hmm. it's like someone is hating you because you are uh, from another culture it's very hard so mm -hmm. you need support you need to talk to someone talk to the teacher and so forth but never retaliate with anger or hate yeah. let there be love and the older people in 
that environment will assist you in managing that thing properly. Mm -hmm. But don't retaliate. I just think it makes things worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and you said it's, it's very, it's, it's a lot easier to say than do. Yeah, yeah. But there is something disarming yeah. about returning love when someone has given you hate. Yeah. Like if, if you're, it, if, it, it makes, it makes, you know, if you're angry, if you're angry with someone and you're yelling and you're yelling and they're just calm and quiet, mm -hmm. the reaction that you don't get, it, it, there's something that dis, it disarms you. So, yeah. so mm -hmm. returning it with love is, you know. Thank you guys so much for coming. Like we honestly learned a lot. I, you learned a lot, right? Oh you yes, know? definitely. Guys, oh, I learned a lot. But the most imp important message for today was that love others as God has loved you. Don't be afraid. Tell us what you guys at home thought. Thank you to our guests for coming. Thank you guys so much. We had so much fun. Thank you to you guys at home for watching. Let's continue this conversation on our social media pages using the link hashtag TG Live, hashtag Friendship Development to join the conversation from me lindo and the rest of the team it's goodbye and god bless <laughs>